when we spoke last um, in Saudi Arabia, actually, we talked a bit about Bitcoin, and you were supportive of Bitcoin. You actually said to me that you're skeptical of a lot of cryptocurrencies, but you think Bitcoin was being misunderstood, and you think that there was a big opportunity. You have since bought a lot of Bitcoin. Where does the position stand right now? And tell us what you see happening in terms of Bitcoin. Well, I bought it well before, okay, well, before, well before we met in Saudi Arabia, and so I, and I, I'm not exactly sure whether I would encourage people to run out right now and, and buy uh, these, uh, these cryptocurrencies. But, um, but the, um, the, the technology that people like to talk about is, is the blockchain technology. I'm somewhat skeptical about how well that translates into good investments. But the, um, the, the one use case of cryptocurrency, of a store of value, uh, may actually have quite a bit of a ways to go. And, uh, and, that, and so I would be sort of long Bitcoin and neutral to skeptical of, uh, of, of just about everything else at, 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 this, at this point, with, you know, with again, with, some, with a few possible exceptions. And, um, and the question, you know, the question about something like Bitcoin is whether it can become, you know, whether it can become a new store of value. Um, and I think the, the thing it would replace is something like gold. We're not talking about a new payment system. So it's, it's too cumbersome to use for payments, for day-to-day -day transactions. But we're, the analogy is it's like, it's like um, you know, a bar is of gold in a vault that never move. And, and you get it, and it's, it's, this, it's a sort of hedge um, of sorts against, you know, the whole world going to um, falling apart or something. And, um, you know, there's about $200 billion worth of Bitcoin. There's $8 trillion worth of gold. And many of the things that make gold attractive would also apply to Bitcoin. And many of the objections people have to Bitcoin would also be objections to gold. So it's, it's this weird currency that's not backed by any government. Same thing's true of gold. It's not clear what the intrinsic value of Bitcoin is. Same thing is true of gold. Um, and uh, you know, it may well be a bubble, but, um, and most bubbles are, are unstable and end. But uh, one of my friends has this line that, uh, that money is the bubble that never pops. And so if it's money, it is bubble-like, and the value of money comes from often this sort of social thing where its value, you know, you'd like to have a $100 bill because everybody else would like to have a $100 bill. And, uh, and then if everyone decided a $100 bill was worthless, um, you might not want to have a $100 bill anymore. And so, uh, so th there is this sort of bubble-like aspect to money, but it's one that can be quite stable. And so even if, even if Bitcoin is, is bubble-like, um, that doesn't necessarily rebut it in this core use case for, uh, for a store of value. And the, you know, and the part, I, I would say that there are all these elements that remind me of 99-2000 that make me nervous. So it's uh, people playing fast and loose with the ICO rules, just like with the IPOs and uh, the dot-com bubble. You have sort of the, the crazy promoter-type people where the people who exaggerate beat the people with a normal plan, and then they get beaten by the people who exaggerate a lot. And so there are sort of a lot of uh, very crazy, unhealthy dynamics. Um, at the same time, um, it still strikes me as deeply contrarian. And uh, one thing that's very different from the dot-com bubble in the, in the late 90s is there are virtually no Wall Street analysts, no Wall Street banks that are pushing this in any way whatsoever. Whereas, you know, if you, if you looked at how many analysts were working on dot-com companies in 99, 2000, that was way too many. And that was probably, you know, sort of another small indicator that it was, it was too consensus. It's been missed in New York City. It's been missed even more shockingly in Silicon Valley, where, um, and it's, it's actually, it is a technology that sort of emerged in this, in this fairly distributed way. Um, Ethereum, the number two currency, uh, most of the work is being done in Zug, Switzerland. Um, Bitcoin, of course, has this mystery where um, people don't even know who created Bitcoin. They don't know who Satoshi, the, the founder of Bitcoin, is. So, uh, so from a geographic perspective, we have actually no idea where that company got started. That's funny. Um, it's interesting to me that you, you are supportive of Bitcoin, but not the other cryptocurrencies. What is Bitcoin? Well, how does Bitcoin differ from well, the 10 others out there? Well, it's, it's, um, I, I believe there will be one. I, my, my view is that there's going to be one uh, cryptocurrency that will be the equivalent of gold. And so the one, all else being equal that you should bet on is the biggest one. So gold continues to be I gold see. because it's the main asset class. Maybe it could be replaced by silver, but it doesn't seem to be happening. Um, so there's a chance Ethereum could beat Bitcoin. There's a chance some of the others have 
better features. And so I think the, um, it's most likely you'd bet on Bitcoin, and then there's some, and then the, the thing you have to think about is, is the product features, are they the ones that you really want in this alternate cryptocurrency? And so there are risks like uh, there's a 51% miner rule where 51% of the miners get concentrated. Uh, that can destroy the integrity of the system. There is a, uh, there's a risk with uh, uh, the pseudonymity, whether that's not quite the right feature, whether you want it to be more anonymous or more transparent or something like that. So there are questions whether the Bitcoin product is, is quite the right one. But uh, all else being equal, I think um, um, my bet would be that there will be one online equivalent to gold, and the one you'd bet on would be the biggest. And, and it's come off of the highs, obviously. It got all the way up to 20,000. If it keeps coming down, would you be poised to buy more Bitcoin? You know, it's the... Um, I don't, want to, I, don't want to, I don't want to do the day trading. I did, I did a presentation on this um, um, where there was a, there was a, there was a term, um, um, HODL, um, and this was a misspelling. It was in, in some Bitcoin chat group at the end of, I believe, 2013 when it was near 1,000 and then subsequently crashed to about 200, 220. Um, and, uh, and there were questions, you know, do you sell, do you buy, what do you do? And someone says, I'm, you know, you want to say, I'm hold, hold, H-O-L-D, but he misspelled it. H-O-D-L, I'm hodling. And then the acronym got uh, um, changed to mean uh, hold on for dear life. <laughs> oh, and so, uh, okay. and so uh, that's, yeah, so it's, it's, it's may, maybe it's, maybe there's a 50 to 80% chance that it ends up being worth, worth less. Maybe there's a 20 to 50% chance it ends up being worth a lot more. Probability weighted, it, it's good. And then the question of how to, how to time this I'm not going to try to you, not going to try to do that precisely. You 